Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a brand new Planeswalker that has entered the vault, Tybalt Cosmic Imposter. So, let's get into this. A really quick shout out to the team at Octagon. Thank you very much for sending me this Planeswalker. Uh, I've actually been having a heck of a lot of fun with it. This is without a doubt been my favorite Planeswalker of all of the ones that have come out in this current Kaldheim set. So Tybalt is a very, very cool walker. So Tybalt is black and red, and the three abilities are going to be Disguised in Pain, Imposter's Trickery, and God of Lies. Disguised in Pain is a little bit funky. It's, it's kind of tricky to understand what it does. So it's going to create some number of Red Devil tokens. At rank four, it's going to create three of them. And then if an opposing creature has been dealt damage, you create two, you're going to create Demon Berserker tokens instead. So basically, if one of your opponent's creatures has been dealt damage, then you're going to be making Demon Berserkers instead of making the little Red Devils. Red Devils are little 1-1 one, one Imp tokens, or Devil tokens, I should say, uh, that are going to have, when they die, they're going to deal damage to your opponent's first creature equal to its power. And the Demon Berserker tokens are going to be these 2-3 tokens, and then as long as there's an opposing creature that has taken damage, then these Berserker tokens are going to have Berserker. So the idea behind the two of these together is that the Red Devil tokens come out. If they die, they do damage to your opponent's creature. Then if you continue to use Disguised in Pain, then you'll be able to make these Berserker tokens that will have Berserker because a creature has to have taken damage in order for you to get them down. And then they will have Berserker because a creature has taken damage. And then you can just use it to slowly take away your opponent's creatures. And then it has the added benefit of then each non-token opposing card gains Enchanted. And then when this card is destroyed, you exile it instead. And that exile is important for the rest of Tybalt's kit. Now, that gaining enchanted thing is not something that you're going to get in the earlier ranks. That comes in the later ranks. But nonetheless, just something to keep in mind. The second ability, Imposter's Trickery, is entirely what makes this Planeswalker who he is. So you're going to create an Imposter's Trickery token. Then you're going to exile the first opposing non-token creature... And then if you've ranked Tybalt up, you're also going to exile an opposing non-token artifact support. Now, the Imposter's Trickery token itself, it's going to give all of your token creatures haste. It's got four shields, it's an emblem. And then when an opposing non-token creature or artifact support is exiled from anywhere, create a copy of that card into play under your control. That card gains enchanted at the beginning of, sorry, at the end of your turn destroy this card. So this ability is absolutely huge because it states when an opposing non-token creature or artifact is exiled from anywhere. So if you're using abilities that exile your opponent's library or you use mass graveyard exile on your opponent, then all of the creatures that you exile that way are going to return to the battlefield under your control. So if you happen to have cards that are going to be able to enable mass exile, then those cards that do that mass exile are then also going to be bringing back a massive amount of creatures for you. This ability is one of the strongest abilities I've played with in quite a while. It is very, very powerful. Now at lower ranks, the Imposter's Trickery is only going to bring back creatures. It's not going to also bring back artifacts, but that's really less of a big deal about the creatures versus artifacts because while it's nice to be able to get your opponent's Shadow Spear or Ember Cleave or something like that, the real juicy thing is when you're stealing things like Gaia's Revenge from your opponent. Then you've got the third ability, God of Lies. So God of Lies is going to make it so that if your opponent doesn't control a Tybalt Vanguard, specifically the Tybalt Cosmic Imposter Vanguard, then you're going to create a copy of that Vanguard under your opponent's control. If you're wondering, why would you want to put the Vanguard in your opponent's control? Well, that's because... The Tybalt Vanguard does a whole bunch of really nasty things to the person who controls the card. So, uh, I mean, you own it, your opponent controls it, right? So, uh, when you cast this card, you may exile it, create a copy under your opponent's control, so it's going into your opponent's control. Then it's got this passive ability 
of when your opponent activates a loyalty ability, they exile the first card without mana from their hand. It has another passive ability that says when your opponent's first creature attacks, it gets plus four plus zero until end of turn, but then it deals X damage to your opponent's planeswalker where X is that creature's power. So before it hits you, it hits your opponent, basically, is the way that that works, uh, which is pretty nifty. And then, so if your opponent doesn't control that, you're gonna create it, and then you're gonna create a copy of that card, and then otherwise, your opponent loses all of their loyalty. All of it. Now, at lower levels, it's going to get rid of a certain amount of loyalty. So for example, like at rank two, it'll get rid of nine loyalty. Uh, but at rank four, it's gonna get rid of all their loyalty. You're gonna gain some number of mana at the higher ranks. At the lower ranks, you don't gain mana. Um, and that's going to be equal to what you're exiling. And then you're going to be dealing damage to your opponent's Planeswalker for each of the different cards that are in their exile. So your opponent is likely going to have a maximum of 10 cards in their exile. So the way that this is really going to work is you get the Vanguard down, then your opponent loses their loyalty, then you're going to gain up to 20 mana, then you're going to deal up to 30 damage to your opponent, which is a very powerful ability. Now, I'm not entirely sure that this ability is working as it was intended. Either the text on this is not right or the way that it's working is not right. One of the two. I'm really hoping that it's just that the text is not right uh, because I would really, I don't think that the ability is broken by any means, but having it work the way that it is currently working definitely makes Tybalt more powerful and it makes his third ability viable, whereas otherwise you'd probably only use the second ability. So. Currently, the way that Tybalt is working is you're getting the Vanguard down, and then you also do you drain your opponent of the loyalty, gain the mana, and do the damage to your opponent's Planeswalker for each different card in their exile. It's not an otherwise, it's not like an either or, it's a both effect. So I'm really hoping that it's intended to put both in, but you never know. So let's go ahead and take a look at what Tybalt looks like also at level 30 in just a second, so you can see. I wound up recording footage for this video of Tybalt at 60, Tybalt at 30, and then Tybalt at level 16. My idea was to try and get some footage of Tybalt with rank 1 abilities, Tybalt with rank 2 abilities, and then Tybalt with rank 4 abilities. That said, due to how this game does matchmaking, if you're, less than, if you're a lower level than 20, uh, I wound up at level 60 just getting matched up pretty much exclusively with level 60s. And so in Platinum, being a level 16 up against a bunch of level 60s is a little bit of a grind fest. I did wind up winning all of those matches. I, I haven't actually lost one of those matches with Tybalt, but nonetheless, they were really long matches. And since I was restricting myself to origins like commons, uncommons, and I maybe some rares, they were, they were kind of long matches. So I wound up choosing to include the footage from Tybalt at level 30 and Tybalt at level 60 for this video. Now, the last thing that I want to mention about Tybalt before we take a look at Tybalt at the lower levels is that Tybalt is going to have the wonderful plus five to red, plus five to black. So having plus five to both of his colors for his mana gains means that you can do some really wacky things with this Planeswalker. Even if you aren't maximizing his abilities, having that plus five, plus five is just an incredibly powerful mana set of mana gains because with access to all the gem conversion that we have at our disposal right now between land forming, and all of the different land supports that are converting to specific gem colors. It's really easy to play cards that just cost a ton of mana with Tybalt, especially if you level him up because his mana gains really are just so high. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Tybalt at 30. At level 30, Tybalt's mana gains are still just about as good as some Planeswalkers are at level 60 in that you've got plus three to both your primary colors, you've got green and blue, which are serving, serving as neutral, and then you've got the horrendous gain in white. But nonetheless, this really enables Tybalt to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with level 60 walkers, even when Tybalt is a lower level. So if you're someone who doesn't have all the different runes to level up Tybalt, and you pick Tybalt up, and then you wind up going up against higher level planeswalkers, Tybalt is very much able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those walkers, in part because of the mana bonuses, and in part because of the second ability. Now, you'll see that Disguised, In Pain, Imposter's Trickery, and God of Lies all look very similar to how they looked at rank 4 with the level 60 Tybalt, with the difference of Disguised in Pain is making fewer of the tokens and then doesn't add the enchanted to exile things, the Imposter's Trickery is only getting rid of creatures, and it has that added addendum that creatures can't be reinforced, and then the God of Lies is still going to be creating the Vanguard, 
but it's draining a set amount of loyalty and isn't giving the mana. But otherwise, the abilities, by and large, as you can see, they, they scale up and become better as you level up Tibalt. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at Tibalt in action. I've played somewhere between, I don't know, like 70 to 100 games with Tibalt. I've played a lot of matches with, I played a lot, a lot of Tibalt guys. Uh, so if you faced me in the training grounds or even in some of the events recently, I, I've been running a lot of Tibalt. So let's take a look at that gameplay. Alrighty, so here I matched up against Brokon. You'll see that the deck is all commons, uncommons, and a few rares. This actually wound up being the very first game that I threw the Ashiok Vanguard into the deck. I wanted to see what would happen if I started exiling things from my opponent's library, if I'd be able to get them back as creatures. So you'll notice that the way that I play Tibble is I try to get to the second ability as quickly as possible. And so as part of getting to the second ability, sometimes I'll make loyalty matches to make it happen. Sometimes I just try and get to my gem conversion, uh, but I'll sometimes even use my second ability to get the token down, even if my opponent doesn't have anything for me to exile. Because while you ideally would like to be able to exile an opponent's creature, in using the ability to maximize it, it's still really good to get that. So uh, here Brokon plays a, a really early, um, oh, Song of Creation. I was thinking Storm the Vault, which it's which is not, but yeah, anyways, uh, opponent plays a really early Song of Creation. Uh, as, as I'm sure you know, that's bad. We don't like seeing Song of Creation come down. Uh, it's a very, very scary card. So I'm going to try and deal with it to the best of my abilities here. And so by dealing with it to the best of my abilities, that means just trying to whittle it down a little bit. I'm making sure that that blue support with three shields is the song. Uh, and luckily, not only do I ping it once for matching it, but then my Volcanic Rambler pings it again. And there's a blue match here for me to be able to destroy it. So even though I'm not making my own matches and Tybalt very strongly benefits from matches in his own colors, I still want to make sure that I get Song of Creation off the battlefield as quickly as possible, and I've now got my second ability available to use also. So if I can just put down that Ashiok Vanguard, then I should be pretty set in trying to steal things from my opponent. Now if you take a look at the deck that I threw together, I will be getting into how to build around Tibble at the end of this video. Uh, but I've got, I've got a bunch of things that are going to do damage and that are going to exile. So Final Death is going to be a 7 mana exile a creature. Here you're seeing that I'm using my second ability even though my opponent doesn't have a creature down. It's so that when I use Ashiok's first ability to exile cards from my opponent's library, I'm going to hopefully get any creatures that I exile that way back. And I get a Keenan, which actually really intrigues me. Because if my opponent's playing Keenan, that means that they probably have some other kind of really nasty beastie. And so I'm wondering what that other really nasty beastie is here. I'm kind of hoping for Gaia, but you never know what you're gonna get with, with Tybalt here. Um, but yeah, anyways, back to what I was saying about the deck building. Uh, so I, I ran Final Death for that, and then I ran Spike Field Hazard because that's going to give a creature enchanted when it dies, you exile it instead, and so that's going to make it so that you get to steal it, which is pretty cool. Uh, so my opponent plays Keenan here, and so I'm thinking, okay, so there's, we know about Keenan, right? We know we know Keenan's in this deck. Uh, so I'm using Ashiox first. I get another Keenan from my opponent, so no surprises there. We already knew that was going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and use Spike Field Hazard and the Volcanic Geyser to steal the other Keenan. It'll destroy it, exile it, and then it'll give it to me. Uh, so we're going to we're going to Spike Field Hazard to give it the Enchanted. Uh, we're also going to get the Land Forming Token out to be able to convert more gems to red. We're going to steal that second Keenan, and we're just going to keep uh, whittling away here at Brocon a little bit. So. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get some gem matches because you know that's super super goodness uh, that we're gonna get from playing so many lands. Uh, we're gonna ideally drop another land. You'll see that my my Ashiok is already at 11 shields, so I've got that thing pumping up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna get another Slumber Mound. I'm whittling away at, at Brocon a little bit, and I'm really just hoping to figure out what what is the other creature that Brocon has in his deck because typically when you're playing against Brocon, Brocon's going to be running a lot of creatures. So uh, here I'm thinking of just exiling my opponent's graveyard, but there, there really aren't that many cards in the graveyard, right? I mean, there was there was that Song of Creation uh, that exiled things, but 
or that, that discarded thing, so maybe I'll get something for that. Uh, and so I pop the third ability, and you'll see that I don't get anything for it there, uh, which is fine. You know, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, so we've got the Scab Clan Berserker down. Uh, my opponent does have Gaia's. All right, so so Gaia's is, is the creature, but that's okay. I'm actually really excited to see it here uh, because the second ability is non-targeted removal. So that means that we get to exile that bugger, we get to steal it, we're going to use Ashiok's ability, uh, we're going to be able to get a Keenan. Uh, so you know what, let's uh, let's go ahead and take it, let's see Let's see what else. And we get another Gaia's, and that's it, that's the end of Brocon right there. Oh man, that's <laughs> it's so fun to steal Gaia's Revenge, or other nasty creatures. I had another match where I stole a Draina, uh, and so I got to just start like stealing creatures for free from my opponent's graveyard permanently, which was pretty sweet. So there's some pretty cool things you can do with this. We're gonna we're gonna smack down this Brocon over here, uh, and we're gonna move on to some level 60 footage. Alrighty, so in this matchup, I'm up against an Ashiok. Uh, you'll see that this is going to be me sort of abusing my collection a little bit for this part. I'm going to go ahead and use Valakut Awakening here just to start getting some gem conversion down. The more gem conversion that I have down, the better. Ashiok is playing with the Ashiok Vanguard, which is admittedly a little bit scary. That Vanguard is absolutely nasty. Uh, but I do have a five match there, so I'm already at my second ability, which is pretty big. However, I don't have anything that exiles just yet in my hand. So I might as well just hold on to the loyalty. Maybe even try out that first ability. Eh? I mean, why not, right? So unfortunately, the gem conversion takes away a five match. But I mean, a five match in white is still only going to give you like three mana. So yuck. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead. We're going to get those little red devils out. And so we've, we've used our first ability here. You'll see that the little, little red devils are out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just keep making as many matches as I can. Uh, just get some loyalty and see what goes from there. So uh, Ashiok is going to destroy my little red devils. Sadly, they're gone. Um, but you're you're going to see that my my opponent is getting pinged a little bit by uh, the the gem conversion here. So uh, at this moment in time, Ashiok is not doing anything absolutely crazy or really anything at all to merit consideration. So I'm not too worried. But Ashiok does here have. Uh, three cards with full mana in hand, and so now creatures are coming down. So you'll see that my devil dies, uh, and then my devil does damage to Ashiok's creature. So Ashiok's little 5-1 critter has taken damage. I'm using my first ability, and now that there is a creature on the battlefield that's taken damage on my opponent's side, I'm going to be getting the Berserker tokens instead of getting the imp tokens. So if you're wondering part of why I was doing that, I was actually doing that just for this video, just for you guys to see. I would not normally do that on my own, um, but I, I wanted you guys to be able to see that ability in action. So I'm going to use Shatter Skull Smashing, and you'll see here that uh, because I used the first ability and gave them both that enchanted thing, uh, they just they just get just splatty splatties, right? They're, 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 they're gone. Um, Oh no! They, I didn't. I don't have my second ability out. I was like, I was gonna, I was gonna get them back, but I didn't use my second ability. Shame on me. So now is a great time to use my second ability because I've got an Immersturm Predator. If you're unfamiliar with how Immersturm Predator works, it's going to exile things from creatures, specifically from your opponent's graveyard when it attacks. So it kind of like just sort of guarantees that you're going to be uh, getting free creatures. Uh, so I'm gonna play the Immersturm Predator. I'm gonna mutate it with Otrimi. Uh, I'm going to use my Eerie Ultimatum because I've just thrown a bunch of creatures into my graveyard. Uh, I've got a Mind Leecher. Unfortunately, I cannot mutate the Mind Leecher coming in, uh, which which really is too bad because, I mean, the, 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 the getting all that bonus exile would be pretty sweet. So uh, my opponent's playing a pretty cool zombie deck, um, but I mean, you know, zombies really don't have... Well, land-based zombies are going to have nothing against this uh, this dragon here. So I, I'm going to actually go ahead and sacrifice my Mind Leech. If, if you're wondering why did you sacrifice that, Nalthazar? Uh, I sacrificed it just because I wanted to have a creature slot open to be able to steal my opponent's stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, use Ruinous Ultimatum, pop my opponent's side of the board. I definitely want to get rid of all their supports. I do not want those out. And I am going to use Immersturm to be exiling things from Ashiok's uh, Ashiok's graveyard so that I can start getting some some free cards back so 
I'm hoping for for the the Rot Hulk, as that's actually a really strong creature, and not like you know the little things. But we'll see. So uh, the Emmerstorm Predator is getting some nice sweet buffs, um, and uh, it, it's it's, get, it's getting rid of some stuff. It's giving giving me some nice sweet buffs. But unfortunately, I did. I did destroy my token uh, from all of my gem conversion. I'm converting so many gems that uh, I, I destroyed my token. So I'm going to have one more opportunity to get a Rot Hulk here. So I'm going to use the second ability. Again, I'm, I'm putting it down, and then I'm going to play the Mind Leecher, mutating it onto Otrimi. And so that, that's going to make it so that I can potentially steal some, uh, some goodness. And yeah, okay, cool. So I get to steal a Rot Hulk there. Um, I also get to steal something for free, so I might as well take Fenax. That's definitely the best card there for me to be able to steal. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take Fenax, and then uh, this is going to be game over. So I'm going to I'm going to exile the last creature card from Ashiok's graveyard, and ideally it's another Rot Hulk. It is cool, 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 cool. And we get to smash Ashiok. So uh, that's that's a an example, a showcase of the first and second ability in action. Let's go ahead and take a look at something where we use also the third ability too. Alrighty, so here I'm up against Koth, so at the very least, it'll be top tier Planeswalker versus top tier Planeswalker. Uh, I've got a black match over there on the bottom, I'm not going to take it, I really don't want to give Koth a 5 match, it'll give him a 5 match at blue, and the more matches you give to Koth, the worse things tend to get for you, because, well, Koth just can do a whole lot with matches, but Koth foolishly gives me a double 5 match, so I'll take that. The, uh, right there, yep, white into red, we'll do that, and we'll get an early game Prismatic Bridge, which is nice. Uh, hopefully get some early game Garudas to load up the graveyard, and yep, we're going to steal that red match away from Koth. Now, if you are one of the people who just got themselves a Necromancer's Covenant, congratulations. Uh, if you did not get Necro ne Necromancer's Covenant, uh, either A, shame on you for not picking Daxos, or B, uh, I'm sorry that you weren't able to play this weekend, and hopefully Daxos will win again and give you another opportunity to get that card. It's a very, very good card. You definitely want it in your collection. But anyways, so I'm building up to my second ability here so that I can start throwing things into exile and getting them for free. And you'll see that I'm using the ability just to get the token down because Prismatic Bridge gave me Ashiok Nightmare Weaver. Now, running both of the Ashiok Vanguards is really sweet, and there you'll see I just exiled three creatures. Oh, man. All right, so so this Koth is not running good creatures. Uh, but you'll see here in this match that even though my opponent is running garbage, uh, I'm still going to be able to do horrible things to my opponent. Uh, because the Tybalt isn't entirely reliant on your opponent having great things. I mean, as it is, look at this. I just got eight free damage on my opponent uh, for stealing his stuff. So uh, even though they're not great creatures, getting eight damage for it is still solid. So my opponent plays an elemental and okay. So so to I, I don't want to like move too quickly through what happened there. If you're wondering, wait a minute, how did that that bird come down? How did you get it? The um the the sweet sweet goodness of the labyrinth of Scophos. So that's that's what happened there. So the bird came in, the lab made it exile, enter play again, gave it to me. My opponent got one. It's got haste, so it still attacks. But yeah, okay. So uh, now we're going to go ahead. We're going to remove my opponent's battlefield. We don't want it to exist. So we're going to use final death on both creatures. It's going to give me another copy of the Phoenix, which is nice. I will, however, not be taking that Brushfire Elemental. I will actually go ahead. All right. So here's one of my favorite things to do with the Covenant here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this core guy. Um, for the zombie token, and I want to count how many zombie tokens, uh, sorry, my, my Garuda for the zombie token, and I want to count how many zombie tokens I get. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that means that there are seven creatures that I'm going to be able to put on the battlefield here. Uh, now, Carter is going to have a lower power than the ones that I've already stolen, so I'm actually going to go ahead and keep the ones I have and just hope that I get more copies of them. Uh, so I just passed on three Bone Crusher Giants. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'm still doing a bonus 36 damage to Koth here, right? So, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a net positive. And, and because of Necromancer's Covenant, I've got little lifelink zombies on the battlefield. So that's pretty nice, too. Uh, I get another Garuda, which just means that if I get another Necromancer's Covenant, that I can just go ahead and start stealing more creatures. Um, I'm going to use Ashiok's first here. Oh, man, this Koth deck is just running so many creatures. I wonder if this is just Koth trying to get experience. That, that might be it. So, uh, at this stage, my goal is going to be to kill Koth using my third ability, because I promised you guys a match where I'd use my third ability. 
So we're gonna we're gonna try and build up that loyalty, guys. It's gonna happen. We're we're gonna use it. All right. So uh, ooh, things are not looking too good for the loyalty front. I'm gonna have to hope that I steal a creature here. So uh, I'm gonna use Ashiox, or I'm actually just gonna use one of the Ashiox because let's face it, there's two of them down. But I don't even notice the other one. Shame on me. But anyways, so okay, so we're gonna steal that. We're gonna we're gonna steal a Carter. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, this won't actually kill Koth this turn. And then how much loyalty do I need? I think I need five, right? Oh no, I need. I just needed what I had. Cool. Okay, good stuff. So uh, my critters are gonna do their boom boom things on Koth. Koth is gonna go really really low, which is very nice. And then I'm actually gonna go ahead and next turn I'm gonna kill Koth with my third ability. So you'll see that I don't have the Tibalt Vanguard on the battlefield, yet nonetheless, I'm still gonna be dealing my damage by using my third. Now, I am still going to use my minus 10 here to get a bunch of free stuff, because why not? Free stuff is cool. I like free stuff, it's nice. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take all my opponent's creatures so I can see what I get. Okay, yeah, we're gonna take the 6-6 six, six over the 4-4 four, four for sure. And then we're gonna use our third ability, and that's all she wrote. So Chris Black, Chris Blutes, Chris Bloom, uh, God of Lies is going to kill Koth. And you'll see that I got all the goodies and Koth got all the baddies. So let's get into my conclusion about Tibalt. For my final thoughts on Tibalt, and then also just a little bit of like how to build around Tibalt, Tibalt is an absolutely amazing planeswalker. Tibalt is without a doubt the best planeswalker that we've seen so far from Kaldheim, and is really one of the best planeswalkers that we've seen in a while in Puzzle Quest. So the design of Tibalt is really cool. I really like the idea behind the whole kit that Tibalt has. Having the plus five, plus five to both red and black is, is really good. And that second ability, Imposter's Trickery, is is just absolutely absurd. Like if you build around that ability, then you're able to just do such nasty, nasty things because we have so many cards available to us that enable us to exile our things from our opponent that you're really able to just get a lot of goodness. The third ability is still very strong. There are going to be situations where you will definitely want to use it to just close out a match. Or if you're playing like, I, th I think it's called a Timeless Voyage. If you're playing that event and you pop your third ability when the event node gives you all the loyalty, so your opponent gets 30 loyalty, you get 30 loyalty, and then all the cards in your hand gain full mana. So if you pop that third ability, God of Lies, then all of a sudden, boom, your opponent does not have any loyalty anymore. It's just like, you know what, buddy? You did get all those cards with full mana, and I don't like that. But you know what? I'm going to make it so you've got no loyalty. Uh, and then on top of that, because I gained 30, I'm going to drain all your loyalty. And then if you wind up playing a creature, yeah, I'm still going to be able to have enough loyalty to use Imposter's Trickery on my next turn and exile it and get it on my side. So uh, there's, there's some really cool stuff that you can do with Tibalt in current events. Now, Legacy Standard doesn't matter. Tibalt is amazing. In terms of my tiering for Tibalt, Tibalt is going to be somewhere between A and S. I have played a lot with Tibalt, but I really need to throw Tibalt into more events before I say, you know what, Tibalt is no matter what an S-tier Planeswalker. If you make an argument for Tibalt to be an S-tier Planeswalker, you're right. If you make an argument for Tibalt to be an A-tier Planeswalker, you're right. I mean, like, you, you can really, you can, it can really go both ways. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's, there's, there's going to be a subjective, uh, there's going to be a subjective element to putting Planeswalkers in a tier list because it's based on where it is that you personally feel they are, based on your playstyle. For me, with my collection and my playstyle, uh, Tibalt is more of an S tier Planeswalker than an A tier Planeswalker. I'm really glad that, uh, that, that that Octagon gave me this walker to try out. Just I wasn't sure about Tibalt, if Tibalt would be great or if Tibalt would just be cool. Uh, but that that second ability just not only is it serving as removal, but is giving you free stuff, and it's just recurring free stuff. Like all the times that I use the ability just to get the imposter's trickery uh, emblem down, and not even just as removal. Like it it's just such a flexible ability. So as for how to build around Tibalt, like if you're wondering, like how how do I go about building around Tibalt myself, right? So this is the deck that I was running at the end of the video. But if you just go to your collection and you just type in exile, like, I mean, that's that's really all you need to do is, is type in exile and then just start going through some of the things that you have and seeing what's going to be exiling cards from your opponent, right? If, if you're looking into legacy cards, I mean, there's a whole bunch of fun legacy stuff that exiles things from 
your opponent's uh, deck or graveyard. Uh, shenanigans like this, where like whenever it deals combat damage to your opponent's Planeswalker, exile the top six cards of their library. And because this is red, you could put Embercleave on it to exile 12 and then just get a bunch of free things. Like there's just a lot that you can do with it, right? But even if even if we like pull it down into like the common and uncommon range, I mean there's just there's just so many cards right now that have some form of exile effect that you you can just do some really pretty sweet things. So uh, we've got in current standard we've got nonsense like dire tactics, which is going to be exiling creatures. Uh, we've even got that common that I was running final death that's going to be exiling opponents creatures. Uh, but nonetheless, there's there's still going to be a lot of really good ways for you to exile stuff. Uh, so. As you saw also earlier in the video, right, when I was running most of those Origins cards, I mean, you can really build Tibble in almost any way. You can build him to capitalize on that plus five, plus five mana gain, or you can build him to capitalize on the second ability. That, that's really what you're looking at. But no matter what, if you pick up Tibble, I'm going to say that I think that you're going to really be glad that you picked Tibble up. If you don't pick up Tibble for money, I would strongly suggest that you pick up Tibble for crystals. Uh, Tibalt's definitely going to be worth it for those 650 crystals. I do know that Strixhaven is just around the corner. We do have a new set that's coming out very soon. I think it's already playable in Arena, so it should be being pre-released and then introduced to Puzzle Quest soon. But this is a Planeswalker that you want in your collection. Very, very good. So uh, as a really quick stand aside, for those of you who have stayed to the end... I'm imagining that many of you are probably people who are in my Discord, but in the event that you're not and you're wondering, Nalthazar, why have your posts been so infrequent? The world's kind of just like hitting me with repeat curveballs, like just over and over again. You'd think that I'd become like a good baseball player and hit those curveballs, but I mean, they're kind of hard to hit. So my wife and I just bought a house. We're in what is called escrow right now. And so for the next month, we're just like signing paperwork, signing paperwork, signing paperwork, signing paperwork. As soon as the documents come in, so it's really exciting that we got this house. It's a beautiful house right on a nature preserve. Uh, so I just get to go out hiking, which is going to be pretty sweet. It's also report card season at work. So it's just sort of like a, a perfect storm of a whole bunch of nasty things coming together. So like to give you an idea, I had um, three nights this week set aside to record this video for you guys. And then all three nights, I just got waves of like signing documents for like banks and for the realtor and all that kind of stuff. So Anyways, long story short is I'm in escrow, and so that's that's giving me a little bit of tie-up. But nonetheless, I'm still just as eager and passionate to make some more videos for you all. I hope that you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.